Hey guys and welcome back to Now I Know. Today we are talking about level of organization in our body. That is from cell to organism. How cells form an organism. We know that we humans, we are multicellular organism or any other multicellular organism is made up of many types of cells, right? We have organs and all different systems in our body. All they are made up of cells. Right? Cell is a base, basic fundamental unit of life. So how these cells actually uh, make up the whole organism? Now let's say for example we humans have 30 trillion cells. Lots of cells, right? There, there's a huge number. We have so many cells that make our body, that make all our organ system. So when you say that one single cell carrying out a particular function, let's say for example I'm talking about red blood cell which has uh, the function of transporting oxygen carrying CO2 back, that is a specific function. You have nerve cell conducts the nerve impulses, you have bone cells, you have WBC, you have uh, lots of other cells designed to carry out specific functions. So that is called a cell. So these different types of cells, they are tiny microscopic cell and one single cell of each type is not enough in our body to carry out that function, right? So you need many types of such cells put together doing that particular function. Let's say for example, in our stomach, you know stomach has the ability to contract because it needs uh, churning of the food, it needs digestion of the food. So it has smooth muscle cells which has the ability to contract and relax. So it can uh, carry out the mixing and churning of the food. But if there is only one such cell, is that enough? No, that is not enough, right? Because imagine stomach is a big organ. So one single cell is not going to do anything. You need such many cells together to do that particular function. So imagine a lot of smooth muscle cells put together and they all contract together. That would contract the whole organ, the complete stomach. So when we put cells together of similar structure and function, we get a tissue and tissue can do a specific function. So we have different types of tissue, nerve tissue, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, and when you put all these tissues together, you know, it can be more than one type of tissue which is working together to give you some common outcome. Let's say for example, epithelial tissue, muscle tissue, nerve tissue, all these when you put together in a stomach, they have a common function that is digestion of food. Okay, they work all together to digest the food. So when you put different types of tissue together is when you get an organ. And when you put different types of organ together, you get an organ system. Let's say for example, as I said, stomach along with small intestine, large intestine, liver, esophagus, all these together would make our digestive system. There are many organs working together towards the one common thing that is digestion of food. Similarly, we have respiratory system, we have circulatory system, skeletal system. So, so when there is a group of organs, different organs doing or working towards the same outcome, as I said in digestive system, you have uh, small intestine, large intestine, liver, pancreas, stomach, all the purpose is to digest the food. So that becomes my organ system. And when you combine all the systems that we have, all organ systems, it becomes an organism. We have so many uh, such systems, right? So the analogy to understand this I can give you is, imagine all the letters A to Z, all the alphabets. A single letter is, uh, you know, it represents one single cell. So A is a cell, B is a cell. When you put together uh, some letters, you get a word right? When you put together all the words, you form a sentence. When you put all the sentences together, you form a chapter. So like that, you might have different chapters and when you put or combine all the chapters together, you will eventually form a book. So a book is, uh, you know, the basic fundamental unit of a book is these letters, right? That is the same thing happens. Organism, the fundamental unit is cell. 
put the cells together you form a tissue when you put different tissues together you form organ when you put different organs together you form organ system combine all the systems you form an organism and that's what happens in our body also so all the living cells all the living organism not the cells all the living organisms are made up of cells the only difference is if it's a unicellular organism uni means one that means it's a single cell organism such as amoeba or it can be a multicellular organism multi means many so there will be many cells in that organism such as human so now we will understand this level of organization one by one so the first basic fundamental unit as i said is a cell that is the first layer so the cell is so a cell is a fundamental unit of life it's a basic unit that has a specific structure and function in our body let's say for example you know we have different types of cells like uh, we have blood cells we have bone cells we have nerve cell each cell each different type of cell would have a specific function to carry out let's say for example nerve cell conducts nerve impulses you have blood cell rbc is carrying uh, oxygen taking back co2 you have wbc involved in allergic uh, uh, allergic reactions phagocytosis etc so each single or each type of cell would have specific function to do so that is a cell but if you imagine you know one single cell has to do something by its own let's say for example a smooth muscle cell which is present in our stomach has ability to contract because in our stomach the food needs mixing churning so it the, the stomach has to move that is possible because the muscle cell smooth muscle cell of stomach can contract but it is just one single tiny little cell right so that's not enough you need such cells many cells together that is where the next level of organization comes and that is a tissue when you put all such similar cells together which has similar structure and function to do you form a tissue let's say for example it's a smooth muscle tissue each of them have ability to contract so when they all contract together is when the stomach also contract the complete organ will contract and mixing and churning of food will occur right then you have epithelial cells you put so many epithelial cells together you form epithelial tissue so that is a tissue group of cells which are similar in structure and function working together forms a tissue now when it comes to tissue in humans we have four basic types of tissues that is epithelial connective tissue muscle tissue and nervous tissue briefly we'll just go through it epithelial tissues we know right epithelial tissue is simply uh, something that forms this tissue forms the outer surface it is on the surface let's say for example skin surface it lines the body cavity so that is epithelial cell we'll just have a look at the diagram in a while we'll understand then we have the connective tissue as the name suggests it is involved in the uh, you know support and connect of a tissue connective tissues would be found in the extracellular matrix where it will connect and support other tissues in between other two tissues it will be present so it is found throughout the body because it's needed for connection of different tissues and the next one is muscle tissue now muscle we know right if if our body can you know we can stand we can move everything is because there are muscle in our body muscle tissue very important and if i'm not wrong you'll be also having some idea about the actin and myosin proteins in muscle that helps in the contraction of muscle so there are three types of muscle tissue that we find in our body so there is skeletal muscle tissue and this is what you know in in our daily life we refer to as muscle or biceps and arm that is the skeletal muscle Now, and these muscles are under voluntary control that means we can control the movement of uh, this particular muscle next one is smooth muscle tissue now smooth muscle tissues are found in the walls of blood vessel in digestive tract urinary tract uh, uterus and smooth muscle can also contract but their movement their uh, movement is involuntary it's not in our uh, control 
okay we cannot control the movement of our stomach by our by ourselves so it is under involuntary control and the third one is the cardiac muscle as the term itself says you can understand they are present in the walls of heart okay and once again that is also not in our control the pumping of heart and all we cannot control so it is under the involuntary control so when it comes to muscle cell skeletal smooth and cardiac muscle tissue and the fourth and last type of tissue is the nervous tissue now nervous tissue as the name itself says they are involved in the sensing of stimuli in the nerve impulse conduction now this nervous tissue is not only nerve cell but it also have glia okay nerve cell we know conducts the nerve impulse but it also requires support of some other cell called glia so so glia are the cells if you can see you know these are the uh, nerve cells right typical nerve cells they are connected and they have this glia this between two nerve cells here also between two nerve cells they have these glia that actually supports these nerve cells they are required for the support of these nerve cells they are not involved in the impulse conduction but they support the nerve cells so this together makes the nervous tissue so there are four different types of tissues uh, we saw right we saw epithelial tissue connective tissue muscle tissue and nervous tissue in muscle tissue there are again three subtypes that is the smooth muscle cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle so when you combine uh, you know you have combination of these tissues put together is when you get the next level of organization and that is an organ the best example here is a uh, stomach to understand as i said stomach is part of digestive system and it requires to digest the food mix the food churn the food absorb the uh, water so stomach is made up of these four tissues okay there is epithelial tissues you can see here this is as i said on the surface so this is epithelial tissues there is connective tissues there are this muscle tissues that are require smooth muscle tissue for the contraction then there is a nervous tissue involved in the communication and control when you put all this together is when the stomach organ is formed and it functions at whatever it does okay so this is how the next level of organization or organ is done when you put all the tissues different tissues who actually aim or working towards a similar outcome because whatever these tissues are doing their main function is or their main aim is to digest the food that comes in the stomach right so that is when we form organ now it's only the stomach stomach itself is not enough for the digestion of food but it has to have other organs with it helping in digestion right so when you put different organs together let's say for example liver stomach pancreas small intestine large intestine all of them are working towards digestion of the food so when we put all of them together is when we get the organ system that is here example is digestive system like that we have many different system in our body circulatory system we have nervous system we have respiratory system skeletal system muscular system so when you put all the systems together is when we get a complete organism right so where we started we started with one single cell and we reached to a human that's how wonderful the organization is a cell forms tissue forms organ combined together makes organ system and forms a complete organism so that's all that's all about a uh, level of organization in brief so that's all for now i hope this video was helpful do subscribe to the channel for new video every week and i will see you next time until then keep learning